this presentation is on screening athletes for sports participation. And the AAP re, uh, refers to this as the pre-participation examination. So first of all, I'd like to offer a special thanks to Alan Friedman, who's a physician affiliated with Yale University School of Medicine and Yale New Haven Children's Hospital, who um, provided a lot of information on this at an update uh, for pediatric providers. So in the sports physical, most nurse practitioners use this as an opportunity to provide a comprehensive health assessment and counseling for adolescents in particularly because it's the only thing they'll, they'll be seen for. And the things you may need to address in this sports physical include um, exercise induced asthma, uh, concussion or mild traumatic brain injuries, female athletic triad, um, scoliosis or screening for other musculoskeletal problems. Certainly we worry about cardiac disease or risk of sudden cardiac death. And as I said, it might be the only contact they have with a healthcare provider. And we know that the leading cause of death in adolescence is really risky behavior. So we want to assess that as well. So let's just talk a little bit about um, definitions and background. We know that um, competitive athletes participate in a team or individual sport, have systematic training, have regular competition against others, and there's this premium on excellence and achievement. And these athletes might be really competitive and participation and excellence in their sport is more important to them than their health. Um, so the screening exam is routine and systematic evaluation that will identify problems and provide clearance for these athletes. So the current guidelines focus only on the potential of population-based screening. And it's not really based on an individual clinical assessment for one child, but more what do we need for the population as a whole. And um, we apply those guidelines to all ages um, in high school and college and apply to both genders. So who's at risk? Well, here's the problem. We know there are 5 million competitive high school age athletes in the United States. And we know there are half a million collegiate athletes. And there's about 5,000 professional athletes. And we know that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is the leading cause of sudden death in athletes, occurs in about 1 in 500. So who's, who's at risk? Who's affected? The prevalence of athletic deaths in youth are about 1 in 100,000 to 1 in 300,000. And we know the incidence is higher in males. The prevalence of death in older athletes is uh, 1 in 15,000 joggers, 1 in 50,000 marathon runners. And the intensity of the exercise is related to the incidence. So Football, basketball, track, soccer are the highest in high school aged athletes when we look at the risk of sudden cardiac death. So what are the causes of death? The fatal arrhythmia is the most common cause and some hearts we know are vulnerable and certain athletes are at risk. It's a hot topic because we know about these cases. It usually hits the media. It's very tragic nature, just really sensationalizes when this happens, and, and a lot of attention is brought to these deaths. 
So the causes vary with age. In athletes younger than 35 years, the majority of causes are congenital, either hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, coronary anomalies, aortic stenosis, or arrhythmias. Things like the long QT syndrome, that sort of thing. The acquired cases are um, myocarditis, dilated cardiomyopathy, and coronary artery disease. And then, of course, there's always the possibility of trauma and a cardiac concussion, especially with an impact injury. So this pie chart um, sort of breaks it down, the incidence for you with the cardiac causes of sudden death with the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy being that biggest chunk, 36%. Um, and then you can see from there the breakdown. And as I mentioned previously, when bad things happen to well-known athletes, it brings a whole lot more attention to this problem. And, um, and because of the media, it becomes uh, prevalent in everyone's mind. So um, Reggie Lewis was a uh, professional basketball player for the Celtics who had a sudden cardiac death in a... Um, in a uh, summer practice, actually, off-season practice. Um, he died of myocarditis, uh, uh, cardiomyopathy. And this is um, a young woman who was a silver medal Olympic volleyball player who died of a sudden cardiac death from a ruptured aorta. And she also had Marfan syndrome, which um, is a risk factor with, uh, with cardiac anomalies, just to keep in mind. And as we said, hypertrophic um, Cardiomyopathy is, is frequently the cause. This slide depicts for you what happens with the thickening of the ventricular wall and then the abnormal rhythm. The non-cardiac causes are things like cerebral aneurysm, sickle cell trait, an acute bronchial asthmatic attack. We can have uh, drug-induced um, sudden causes of death, cocaine, amphetamines, or some uh, unknown substances. And then, as we mentioned before, the cardiac concussion that happens with the blunt trauma to the chest. So there are some ethical or social considerations that we need to talk about when we're thinking about um, the pre-participation sports clearance. And providers attempt to identify who's at risk. And the schools usually are interested in implementing cost-effective strategies to promote or to protect their athletes and promote participation. And then society uh, we know permits many sports with significant risk and they may not be willing to bear the cost of comprehensive screening of every one of these children who want to participate in a sport. And the facts are that we can't really achieve zero risk. So the current recommendations are athletic screening should be performed by a licensed healthcare worker, and that means uh, nurse practitioners, advanced practice nurses, and that you should have requisite training, that you should have physical assessment skills, that you should obtain a thorough cardiovascular history, and many organizations have developed uh, guidelines for what questions should be asked. And then you should perform a cardiovascular examination. 
and recognize signs and symptoms of heart disease. So who should perform the screening? Um, certainly uh, anybody with appropriate training and um, that can be physicians, registered nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants. The um, American Heart Association published some recommendations and some considerations for the pre-participation um, clearance and it was uh, published in 2007 and these have been updated and um, reviewed by a committee from multiple organizations in 2010 and remain um, consistent. So their recommendations are you get a targeted history and physical exam, you identify cardiovascular lesions known to cause sudden death, and um, it should take place in all high school students and college age participants prior to the initiation of their training. And you repeat the full screening at, at least every two years. There should be an interval history and blood pressure yearly. The key elements to this cardiovascular screening are um, to ask if there's a personal history in this athlete of exertional chest pain or discomfort, unexplained syncope or near syncope, excessive or unexplained dyspnea fatigue associated with exercise, any prior recognition of a murmur, any elevated systemic blood pressure, and then the family history, any premature death, any sudden or an unexpected death before the age of 50 due to heart disease is um, suspicious. Disability from heart disease in a close relative under the age of 50, and any specific knowledge of certain cardiac conditions in the family like the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy um, and, and any uh, dilated um, uh, vessels and any long QT syndrome. Marfan's, as we mentioned, is associated with some cardiac anomalies and those kids need more careful evaluation. And then the physical exam you want to listen for a heart murmur both with the um, patient, the athlete, lying down and standing, thorough examination for pulses, and um, you want to rule out uh, aortic coarctation by doing simultaneous uh, right and left uh, radial and femoral artery, and also the uh, right radial and femoral artery simultaneously. Um, you're going to recognize Marfan syndrome and you're going to get a blood pressure in both arms preferably. So know that even the best history and physical won't detect everything. It should detect aortic stenosis because you'll get a systolic ejection murmur it should detect Marfan syndrome just because of the physical presentation, but it may not detect hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy, coronary artery anomalies, and some of these other more rare conditions. So the question is, should we be doing an electrocardiogram in addition to the history and physical? And the rationale for the question is it's much less expensive than other tests. It's uh, abnormal in about 95% of those with the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's usually abnormal in coronary anomalies as well. It can identify those with, um, with the uh, conduction abnormal, uh, abnormalities. Um, but it's less sensitive than an echocardiogram. And it's nonspecific. So uh, many athletes have an e EKG, ECG with abnormalities and they have no heart disease. 
Um, and the studies are difficult because of the large numbers. We, you know, we've already said how many high school athletes that we're dealing with and, um, and the large number needed to find true disease. So the echocardiogram is uh, another potential and it's pretty good at picking up um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, valvular heart disease, aortic root dilatation, left ventricular dysfunction, the myocarditis and the cardiomyopathy. Um, it, it's pretty good at picking those up. But it won't necessarily define all abnormalities either. So coronary artery abnormalities, single coronary artery or left main coronary artery, um, those things are probably not going to be detected. And it doesn't pick up the arrhythmias. Um, and even some hypertrophic cardiomyopathy may not be evident until late adolescence or early adulthood. We also know the echocardiogram is very expensive. The average charge is about $600, depending on what setting you're in. And we know that the um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is one in 500. So at $600 or more, um, it costs about 300,000 to pick up one athlete with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And with 5 million young athletes uh, in high school participating, if, even if we screened them for $100, which probably you can't do, it would be uh, 500 million to screen all those high school athletes. So why is this um, echocardiogram so expensive? Well, it's $100,000 per machine, takes a technician that makes at least $25 per hour, takes over 15 minutes per study, then the cardiologist needs to review it. And again, if you have 5 million studies, you have 275 studies every day of the year in each of 50 states, and only a busy, a busy lab will do about 20 studies per day. So you can see how it's just, it's just not feasible and or cost effective. So the screening literature suggests um, pre-participation screening in um, all US colleges. What they uh, looked at was um, surveying all of these colleges to see what people were currently doing. So they surveyed over 1,100 schools and almost 80% of them responded. And 97% required it, 51% um, said it annually. Only 26% had H&P forms with nine or more of the 12 um, American Heart Association screening items. 24% had few or, or four or fewer. And um, the screening was done by a team doctor, by a nurse practitioner, and or a team trainer. So um, the other literature on screening suggests um, a 17 year study in Italy um, looked at 33,735 athletes that had a pre-participation screening. And this is a, a, an older study, was done in 98. They looked at history, physical exam, and blood pressure, 12 lead EKG, and limited exercise, a step test. 3,000 had an echo, 621 were disqualified, 22 cases, of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy were found and none of them died. At least one case of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy was not found and that person did die. So what do we know? We know that people with symptoms during exercise should be evaluated thoroughly. If they have chest pain or tightness, if they have palpitations or irregular heartbeat, if they have syncope, it's never normal during exercise. They should be referred, referred to a trained specialist 
They should have a history and physical, an exercise tolerance test, a 12-lead EKG, and an echo. So in summary, um, just keep in mind that sudden death in young athletes is rare. All young athletes should undergo a pre-participation screening that should include the 12-point American Heart Association recommendations. All abnormalities should have uh, referral for further investigation before they're cleared. They should not go to any practice until they're cleared by um, somebody who does a more thorough assessment. We must recognize the limitations of screening and we need to know about the cost effectiveness of diagnostic testing. So the ECG in the Italian study supports its use for picking up hydro hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, we know the echo is accurate but expensive and you always want to be aggressive in the evaluation with an athlete with symptoms.